These are all the Fury boats. Here to the right. And then... Uh, 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 Ooh! <laughs> Alright, let's go back. Come on. This way. We're going this way. What? These guys! Holy moly. You like that? All right guys, so welcome back. I hope you enjoyed those quick little clips. I'm sure a lot of you guys already know I am in Florida right now and I have a, actually I have a short video that came out I think last week. It's like 60 seconds of the first two days in Florida if you guys wanna check that out. Well, I think we just had a cloud come in. All right, and by the way guys, we are in my brother's office right now in Key Largo. Don't forget to check out his channel. Send some love over there. He just posted, my brother Heiko just posted a pretty wild video that where the uh, Coast Guard actually had to save us uh, quite far offshore. But what I wanna be covering in this video is the three hacks to boost your portfolio. And these are things specific to this month, although they really all build upon each other. And a lot of these things repeat themselves. So in each one of these kind of points, I'm gonna dive into a lot of kind of finer details. If it's information coming from a trade or from my personal journal, or just something that I've been experiencing again and again. Right now it's December 2nd, and you know what that means. It's time for a monthly trading recap. I'm gonna share my my screen and then we're gonna go through my trade journal review some of the biggest stats and biggest takeaways also I know the screen is a little bit dark right now I don't have my um, my typical lights and whatnot set up actually here's a shot of my current setup right now I got a second screen it's gonna be coming to the right and then I'm gonna be lifting this screen to the left up a little bit it's gonna be quite crazy we're gonna have four trading screens and it's gonna be a really compact setup so we can easily travel and trade which is going to be really really nice for those extended one month airbnb stays Ooh, it's getting darker in here by the second all right guys let's go ahead and switch over the, to the trading screen and figure out what's going on here so i'm going to do two things really quickly i'm going to go ahead and show you a few months leading up to november just to give you guys a general idea of kind of the flow if you haven't seen all the other recap videos and then also i just kind of want to review a few of the um, bigger trends we've been seeing here lately um november wasn't like a month of like crazy differences there wasn't anything too um absurd going on if you guys seen some of the other recap videos i'll have like a list of like important dates this is what i kind of wanted to point out a little bit because november 18th was the day we actually did our last recap video typically actually for the last year plus since uh, 2019 November somewhere around there we've been doing a recap video after every live trading day and uh, it was going good it made a lot of sense but as our live streams kind of got longer and longer and longer it didn't really make sense to make recap videos anymore because I already recapped it like two three times during the live stream so at one point it just kind of felt like this extra thing that didn't really make sense and I wanted to take that time put it into things that I felt like had a bigger return and was more beneficial for everyone else. So right now, since I'm kind of, you know, it's holidays right now, I haven't been getting out the swing trading videos. Um, so you, typically I wanna do one in the morning. So it's been a little bit of a different schedule, but um, just, just know we're typically coming out with like two videos a day, um, the live stream and a video going over a stock or something like that. And that's much more possible now because we're kind of shifting over from the recap video. So this was a really, really big change. And the last major event is that in November 23rd, which was a Monday, we actually started trading with this new laptop, the new setup. At first it was a little bit all over the place. I had you no know, screens leaning on books and whatnot, but um, so far it's really kind of falling in together. Um, don't forget guys, if you are curious on what my setup is, I kind of put everything into Amazon um, Office, uh, kind of more or less wish list, um, so you can see a lot of the things I'm using. I'm about to actually clear out this one and this keyboard and this. Uh, I'm not using those three things, um, although I did really like them. I actually ordered that keyboard at one point, but um, <clears throat> yeah, I always keep my latest setup here updated uh, on this page in case you guys are curious. All these links you guys can also find in the video description below and the first pinned comment is going to be this whole entire November 2020 recap. In July, let's quickly recap here because every month we've actually, we're kind of in a lucky streak right now where every month we are getting a little bit better and better. I think there's some jets flying over us right now. So if I pause for a second, um, that's why you can kind of hear them in the background. So July, we had a pretty nice little month here. We made $3,500. It wasn't like anything insane. It was nice that we were kind of coming out from the $25,000 challenge. So I had the unlimited account. I was able to go a little bit more um, aggressive, but I was still using really, really small size, as you can see right here. I'm gonna go close the window again. 
All right, that's America for you. I had to close the windows. You got jets flying above. It's going crazy over here. Okay, so yeah, like I said, we were using smaller size, so it wasn't like um, we were expecting any sort of blow away uh, trading, but at, or like profits. But at the same time, you know, we had like that almost yeah, actually over 200% return based on our average position size. So that was really really nice. So let's dive into the next month. Actually, here this was August. And, um, and also a quick little side note, we've been doing this uh, since November last year, but I, I, you know, I don't wanna go over every month, it'll take a little bit too long. Um, yeah, so we increased our position size in that, a little bit, and then um, here we didn't have that 200% increase, but you can see again, um, profits are going up as well. And then the next month here in September, this is when we were in Portugal for a month, um, my, uh, my win ratio here, we got a little bit sloppy, but we actually had, or my you know, risk reward, um, but our, our winners really took off here, 72%. That was really nice. I increased position size a little bit again, um, but my overall you know, average based on my position, position size went down a little bit. So um, you know, in that first kind of July month we showed you guys, this would have been a one uh, or a 200% plus return here based on average position size. And then in September we had a little bit less than that. You know, that should have been $6,000 profits if we had similar stats. But you can see here, I was not maybe as clean, but it was still my best month because we were going up with position size, right? Now we're getting to October, and this was, again, another one of my best months. Um, slowly increasing that position size. That means, you know, even if we're getting a little bit sloppier, we have bigger position size, so we're able to walk away with a little bit more profit. And you can kind of see here, I kind of forgot to point out, but look at the total trades here. You can see every month is a little bit different, 140, 190 um, total trades here, almost 300. Um, so it gets a little bit, you know, this number kind of goes um, all over the place. So that's that's really important too. You know, how many times am I trading per day? Because as long as you have consistent statistics and you're able to manage your risk, right, then all you need to do to make more money is kind of trade more in a weird way. Um, but then you don't want to over trade. So it's a little bit of a fine line between, you know, like getting in as many trades as possible, but, you know, not getting to that point where you're over trading, giving back profits unnecessarily. And then, um, then we'll have right here, this is the one we're going to be talking about. This is... Uh, November stat. So November um, net profit 8.5 thousand. This is our best month so far. Um, but look at this. Our average position size here um, didn't really get that much more from the month before. I mean, the other months you can see like there was much bigger increases. So you can kind of tell that like I'm kind of getting to that point where I I probably feel a little bit more comfortable in like what my size is right now, um, but not super more comfortable in you know increasing our position size. I do want to get to that ten thousand dollar position size, and I want to shoot for. December to maybe be getting around $5,000 position sizes. That'd be nice. So, you know, starting 2021, we could really be on track for getting, you know, to those $10,000 average position sizes. That's what I would really like. Our net profit and our gross profit are the same because, you know, there's no fees on TD Ameritrade. That's why these are the same numbers. Um, total winners here, this is pretty good, 68% or 67.89%. That's pretty nice. Uh, scratches is basically when there's, you know, you get in or you get out for the same price you got in. So there's basically a total of zero. Um, I, I like this. I, I always like a stats over 70%, but you know, I see like my average to be a little bit closer to 64%. Um, so anything over 64% I think is like pretty good. Risk reward here. Okay, pretty much a two to 2.5 risk reward. It's not ideal, but you know, with day trading, we get a little bit scalpy, and you know, sometimes you know, we like to take our profits really quickly. Although we're looking for always trades with bigger risk rewards, so you know, if there is a five percent downside, there should be a you know, ten to fifteen percent upside. But then I'll typically take profits fairly quickly, um, which allows me to not have those experiences where you're up three to five percent, and then all of a sudden you close for a loss. There's really nothing more stressful than that. Yeah, we talked about average position size, obviously 4,000, we wanna get that over 5,000 or at least um, to 5,000 December. Uh, max consecutive losses, nice to see that lower than the max consecutive wins, but you know, overall this isn't really too important. And then you can see my largest winning um, is much bigger than my largest losing. So that's always, you know, a good kind of place to be. You don't wanna hold your losers uh, too long. Um, this is actually a pretty big loss, and it's I think it was a swing trade was the dollar, and uh, we'll talk about that a little bit. So we'll talk about the biggest winners, biggest losers as well in this video. Let me just close a few of these tabs, um, clean it up here a little bit, and um, boom, boom, boom. Let's close this out as well, and yeah, let's go back to the, the main takeaways now. I'll scroll up here. These are things that all of you guys could start implementing right away. So first of all, 
without a question, this month for me personally was a really a swing trade kind of month. Most of my profit actually came from swing trading this month and that's a really unusual thing. That's the first time it's ever happened, um, which totally makes sense because you know last month we were holding a lot of swing trades and then this month we actually started realizing some of the some of the profits. Um, so you know with swing trading it's always like it's it's going to be a bit weird. It's not going to be as consistent as day trading because sometimes you might have zero profit, sometimes you might have a red month because you only maybe closed out some losers and then the next month you have a huge profit because you closed out a bunch of winners. So swing trading it's always a bit of a question and I think that's why this month was exceptionally good for me because we closed out two really, really big uh, swing trades. We saw, also had some losers, but the big thing though I wanna really point out here is you, you wanna separate your day trading account from your swing trading account. This is something I do mention quite often, um, but it's something that in October really, really threw me off. Because if you guys are in our live streams, you'll probably see this all the time. Actually, here's a perfect example. So I just opened a uh, live stream and you can see right here, I'll have my swing trades open and this is actually this yeah this is the 25 challenge account so this is inside my swing trade account which is nice because all my swing trades you can see here and then I switch to a different account and then you see all my day trades what was really throwing me off is it was like was when my day trades and my swing trades were all mixed together kind of gave me a headache and it kind of was like you'd start the day and you'd see this kind of account and you're like oh my god um, do I need to manage it whatnot um, I mean we're kind of used to that at this point but I really like to kind of separate um, that from my head. Actually, this is crazy. So all of my biggest winners, my biggest losers um, were swing trades, except one. Here you can see swing trade, swing trade, swing trade, and day trade. So let's actually, I think I already opened them all up here. So let's actually go ahead and review each one of those to kind of really wrap up what I mean by separating your accounts and why it's, why it's so important. Actually, let me zoom back out here. So KCAC was one of those classic swing trades. We actually entered this one on a pullback and if we just open the chart here, you can kind of see what I mean by entering on a pullback. It actually would have been a little bit probably better on a daily chart, but um, it's not this trade, it's this trade. So we had a nice breakout here on the daily, and then I was buying this support zone pullback area. It did pull back a little bit more, but then it looked like it was gonna continue. Um, now with KCAC, I was totally fine for holding this one a few months, and I was actually just about to average down this area, but I had a full allocation already, so I didn't feel super comfortable averaging down, and that's why I didn't. So this was in my a day trading account, you can see Associated Portfolios Unlimited, that's my day trading account. And that's why I was like, oh man, like every day I had a look at this one, every day I was doing a recap video, I had to explain, you know, okay, this trade is down, but it's not a day trade. You know, it was just like constantly playing, uh, you know, it was one thing to explain and one thing to kind of think about myself when I could have just had it in a portfolio where I didn't have to always look at it, which is really important on swing trades and especially investments. I very rarely look at my investment portfolio. It's even in a different brokerage. That's how much I think it's important to separate accounts. So with KCAC, I'd hold through all this, and then we eventually, and my max stop was actually getting really close. So I almost got stopped out of this trade. I kind of got really lucky. Eventually, we kind of popped back up here. I was like, okay, this is looking good. I wanted to wait to see if we had a pullback here and a continuation. Um, we kind of did, but on this day, it was very, very weak. It looked like there was huge resistance, and I just ended up closing on this move back to the upside. So to me, I really liked this overall trade. It was good um, risk reward, I felt like. Um, but at this area, there was huge resistance and I didn't feel like holding it anymore. Um, so that's when we kind of cleared up this KCAC trade and walked away with 43% uh, profit with a $5,000 position size. Um, again, you guys can review these trades much more on your own time if you are curious. The link is in that uh, first pinned comment. So. GE, this was another one of our swing trades. This was actually in our swing trade portfolio, the 25K challenge portfolio, which is now our swing trade portfolio. I'm actually gonna probably rename this one because that's just confusing for everybody. Uh, but this was a really good return, 60% and only on a $3.3,000 position size, we walked away with 2,000 bucks. So this was a really, really nice one. Um, but similar situation here. So we had a nice breakout and then we bought the pullback back to um, bigger support. But then we had a hold through a lot of this and then we had a lot of these kind of larger pullbacks along the way, which is totally normal. But you know that that's something that can mess up with you, in your mind uh, in a day trading account. So um, as we kind of approached $11, I gave it one opportunity to break, but then I sold that same day because I didn't really want to hold through this one um, and have, you know, be deal with a big drop. Um, I thought, you know, $11 is a big shoulder here. I talk about this trade a lot in the live stream, so I'm not gonna, you know, dive into it too much right now, but you know, this was one of those classic nice big run-ups. Um, EVs and anything kind of associated with, you know, solar or renewable energy, um, GE uh, was for sure. 
um, was running like crazy. So uh, any sort of environmental social governance kind of companies, ESGs, were doing really, really well. Um, let's keep moving on here to our two biggest losers. So we had LMND. This was another swing trade. And again, in our unlimited portfolio, this was a support line bounce. And you know, this one was really unfortunate because I basically bought in too early on LMND right here in this zone. Um, and then it sold off more. I kept on averaging down, got a full size. And then I sold on this retest because I thought it was gonna be a dead cat bounce and we're gonna keep selling off. Actually, this one could have been one of our biggest winners. It went back to like 65 or so. So I really honestly sold right on the way to the uh, to the upside. Again, you know, I'm looking at these account, these trades every day kind of made me, I feel like it was making me fumble around a lot. And that's, that's just never really a fun place to be. So yeah, and then IMAC, this was actually a day trade. Um, we got stuck in a flush here. I was buying a pullback to VWAP, looking for a breakout past the 9 EMA, didn't work. And then this thing dipped hard and then we kind of cut our losses, um, which is, you know, happens. Sometimes you just, you know, don't get lucky or you don't get the trade you want, um, you know, get stuck in a flush and boom, you have got your losses. So, um, but this was again in our day trading account. Plus a breakout, oof, breakouts are always tough for me. Although this month actually turned out where breakouts were really, really good. By the way, guys, if you are curious to learn more about what we do here every single day, we go live between nine and 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Every single day the market's open. You can join us on YouTube. The chat room is absolutely amazing. Uh, we're here to all help each other. And then if you guys go to tradejournal.co forward slash connect, you can get access to the Discord chat, the foundation video series, which will get you um, caught to speed. We got some merch there and we got some sponsors there. So check out this page for any of that kind of, uh, to just really, really get you up to par quickly. So that's tip number one, separate your accounts. Really, really a, a big thing and it's an easy thing to do. So right now, today, you guys can do it. Um, separate your accounts, investment, swing trading, and day trading. It's good for your statistics, it's good for your psyche. Just do it, promise me, and uh, I really couldn't recommend it enough. Alrighty, number two, uh, listen to recurring themes. Um, when you ch take your notes and you do your statistics daily, and you review your past trades and you have a personal journal and you're constantly reviewing it last month and the month before, there's one thing I noticed, there's always like recurring themes and just you know act upon those things. Um, one thing I do notice I say a lot um, is especially near the end of the month, I'm like, oh, this was a sloppy month, I could have done much better, um, horrible stuff here, or you know I completely dropped the ball, X, Y, Z. Um, but then I say at the end as well, is like, it's still my best month. So it's actually really, really exciting. It's basically um, shows that you, know, you can make a lot of mistakes it doesn't matter, you can still have your best month. So for me, taking a lot of base hits, not holding anything too long, not taking any unnecessary risk, if I'm you know, having a bad day or whatnot, I just kind of stop trading. So all those little things are really, really important. And it kind of you know, is also really exciting because I feel like at one point, I'm gonna have one of those months where I'm like, ooh, this was a good month. And that's, you know, that's an exciting thought to have. But I think no matter what, every week you're gonna have like, I don't know, a down day or something like that. It's totally normal. You're gonna have your handful of um, bad batches uh, no matter what. Um, it's all kind of statistics in the end, right? Here's a big thing, uh, sloppiness comes from a lack of conviction. So sometimes I'll have one of those trading days where I'm either really tired or I just, um, there's too many stocks moving or I, there's something moving where I don't really trade often, uh, like, I don't know, mid caps or large caps, and those are the ones actually trending today, or a Chinese ticker that I don't really wanna trade. Um, and then sometimes I don't do that hot. I don't you know, hold my breakouts um, like I should. I don't um, buy that dip like I should. Um, and that oftentimes comes, or like you know, I start sh getting shaken out a lot. Um, that often comes with a lack of conviction. So basically, I am not focused and I'm just kind of you know trading and you know checking out too many different things. And you guys will probably notice that in the stream. You guys probably notice exactly when I do that. Monday this week was a big day of that where I just could not get focused. And today I was like, boom, we have a nice gapper. I'm gonna be really focused on this one. We reviewed it really intensely pre-market. And then we today we um, had a really nice uh, trading day. So have a plan, stick to the plan. And um, what I like to avoid is, you know, if I switch to a new ticker, I try not to trade it right away. I try to like, you know, get a um, feel for it. And it, you know, if, if I do wanna trade it right away, there's also nothing wrong with that. Or if I wanna trade a setup, that's not that great. There's also nothing wrong with that because sometimes, you know, you can learn a lot from that. And sometimes having a trade where you quickly jump in lets you avoid FOMO down the road because sometimes if you miss one of those good moves, even though you just saw it, 
Sometimes you'll be like, you'll be like, oh man, I should have got that one. And then you're going to be waiting for another trade and then you're going to FOMO into a trade that's maybe not as good. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with you know, jumping on something. But if there's an opportunity that just isn't that great because maybe you're coming to it too new or maybe, or maybe because you're not really ready for it yet, I don't know, it doesn't really matter. What I like to do is just reduce my position size. So I know, okay, this trade is a, you know, a breakout and it's a little bit overextended, but it could easily go up another 10%. And I know maybe that's not my best strategy. What I should just do is I use a third or maybe a half of my average position size. That way, even if it does go wrong or if it pulls back a little bit, I'm not gonna get shaken out. I'm gonna be a little bit more level-headed. I did it many, many times today. Yes, you know, maybe I could have made more money, but at the same time, it really helps me reduce a lot of risk. And I find that really, really important. Also, here's a good one. So there's usually a trend in stocks and sectors. I'm sure you guys are well aware of that. Um, every two to three weeks I notice this, usually one strategy works really well. And we're gonna actually dive into some strategies right now. So I don't know, sometimes dip trading works really well, sometimes breakout trading works out really well, sometimes buying pullbacks works out really well. And it's always like, it works well for like two to three weeks and then it stops. And that's usually why I'm like, at the end of a month or something like that, I'm like, oh, you know, I'm ending not very strong because there's a pivot in the overall market. Maybe it's a sector play, maybe it's, you know, pre-market is stronger, maybe market open is stronger, maybe late day is stronger and you know people start acknowledging that and then everyone gets aggressive on that and then you know within two to three weeks uh it's kind of overplayed it's oversaturated and then the trend kind of shifts a little bit differently right um right now ev tickers are really hot and they're really cyclical right now in terms of you know we have a huge run and then they pull back really aggressively a huge run and they pull back really aggressively and then right right now we're just kind of i feel like at the high of one of those big runs and actually already on the way down a little bit so hot sectors fluctuate the way you day trade fluctuates uh, the, the way you should day trade kind of fluctuates. So it's kind of good to always have like a few strategies you can switch between. So let's actually talk about some of those strategies. Ooh, and actually let's maybe zoom out just a tad uh, so we could squeeze all the information in here. So one of my actually my uh, favorite ways to trade is usually dip trading. So I'll buy some, a stock that's trending down and I buy it when it gets overextended from the 9 EMA and I usually um, uh, trade it on the way back to the EMA. So let's actually kind of show you guys an example here. Here's a perfect example. And can I zoom in on this one a little bit more? I think I gotta you know, move it over here. Um, here's a pretty good one to uh, explain. So here you can see we had a nice little bounce here and then we dipped off a little bit more right here. And then I ended up accumulating on this little spot after the break of 1.5. And then I traded that on the way back to 9 EMA. This is a strategy I really, really like, but it doesn't always work. Sometimes you have stocks that move up very aggressively and then they have a nice little pullback or something like that. And then they start flushing, right? And this is a strategy you gotta be very careful with and it's not for every environment. Um, so this is you know, a strategy I really like, but at the same time, it's one, uh, it's important to kind of figure out what kind of stock um, is ideal for that strategy. Um, you can see total trades here this month, or yeah, November wasn't a lot. 29 trades on this one strategy is a very, very light amount. And so I don't even know how serious we can take these statistics here, but you know, one of my better um, trading strategies here, you just, you take on a lot of risk and you can see my risk reward on this one's not ideal. So. Um, yeah, one of those strategies that you just gotta be a little bit careful on. We have um, the red to green strategy, which is kind of a dip trading strategy. It's basically when the market opens and sells off and it's that first kind of move to the upside. So here we have elite gapper, and actually let me zoom in again on this one. We have elite gapper, market sells off, and then I buy on the dip near support and I'm looking for a move back above the open price. So that would be around 3.2. You can see here, I didn't really trust this one. And I got out really quickly. I did walk away with some decent profits. Um, so it's kind of like a dip trade because ultimately we're doing the same thing. Is st uh, stock is selling off, there's some support, change of momentum, and then we're selling on the retest or into a breakout, right? Ideally, you should be holding into the breakout. That's how you're supposed to trade red degree moves or you buy into the breakout and you, then you sell into, I don't know, um, maybe like three, five or something like that as new resistance kind of comes in. But I don't always hold that long because I find that red degree moves don't always work out. I feel like there's more times than not, they don't work out. So I usually don't hold red degree moves that long. Yeah, so you can see here, I mean, since you only have one or two maybe opportunities to do a red degree move, I usually only count the first trade of the day as a red to green if it's that setup. Um, otherwise, I don't uh, really count it. And also something to remember here, like what is a red to green move? I know it gets kind of, it's a very, there's a it's, a, it's such a loose term here, but it's basically when the daily candle is red, right? And then you go green on the day. So all of a sudden that daily candle goes from red to green. So that's the important part. Technically it happens throughout, it could have happened throughout the day. Um, but for me personally, I kind of just associate the first trade of the day to a red to green. Um, if that's what I'm looking for. Um, here's a classic DNK. 
Um, this is one of those examples where a red to green would have actually worked out if I held. Um, so I bought here on the pullback and then I sold right as we were getting to that double top um, where you technically should be maybe buying the breakout and then riding into the strength. So if I just held this one, this could have been a huge, absolutely huge winner. Um, I, if I held it the whole time, it could have almost been a hundred percent winner. Obviously that's not what we're doing here, um, but you know, kind of goes to show that that's kind of what we're doing with red to greens. Okay, so we have the dip trade, we have the red to green, and then we have a pullback, which is kind of one of my favorite setups. Now this is skewed. There's a $2,000 swing trade sitting in here somewhere. Um, so just you know, keep that in mind right here it is. Um, again, day trading in my, uh, or swing trading in my day trading account, it freaking messes me up and it's just, oh, it's always so stressful. Um, so this is actually closer to like one, uh, $1.2,000. dollars um, just kind of like note to self. Um, keep that in mind. So here I actually have a really nice uh, risk reward, 1.4 to 2.8. That's that's actually pretty solid. I like that. Kind of like a one to two risk reward ratio. Total winners, not the you know not as high as they maybe could be, um, but you know it was it's an okay strategy. Now what I I did make it kind of a pivot in this strategy in November, and I was kind of trading it more like a breakout. I don't know if we're gonna see any good pictures here of that, uh, but okay, well nah, that's a bad one to explain. Um, but yeah, okay, let's just use this one. We already kind of looked at this picture before, but here I traded a breakout. Um, I got really lucky and I bought the pullback to the nine EMA. So we were breaking higher with decent volume, but a lot of sell volume. Um, and I bought this kind of pullback to the nine EMA looking for a continuation. I kind of got lucky on that one because it ended up flushing afterwards. Um, let me see if I can find something a little bit more legit. Oh yeah, you know what? Actually, let me let me uh, talk about this one because this this really uh, sums it up really well. So a lot of my um, pullback trading has almost gotten borderline breakout trading, where I'll start buying micro pullback. So we have let's say a nice breakout here, and I literally buy in the same green candle, and sometimes I call it a pullback if that's kind of what I'm doing. Uh, as the let's say the nine EMA is really really close or something like that. So the the whole breakout and pullback thing has lately gotten really really similar. Um, I try to really classify it properly if I'm you know buying into a breakout or if I'm buying into like let's say a breakout and now it's kind of pulling back a little bit. Um, I try to make that distinction but um, I'm sure it's it's a little bit harder to I, I don't know how perfect this is. So November has been a really hot month. And what I've been doing in November is actually waiting for that volume to come in and then boom, I get really, really aggressive. Maybe buy that first one minute pullback uh, and then you know even buy into breakouts. I, I found that has been working much better than waiting for that second, third, fourth pullback that usually lately has been ending up in a flush. So identifying that has been really, really helping. And actually, if we go here to the, so yeah, if we go here to the breakouts, you can see um, it is at $849 profit, um, 71 total trade. So I've been trading breakouts a lot more than I usually trade. Um, and this doesn't sound like that much money uh, with the day trading, but it's pretty much a third of all my day trading profits for no November has been um, breakout trading. Well, okay, maybe more like a fourth, but uh, it's it, it was very significant. But my problem is with break, breakout trading is sometimes I take too long to buy the breakout and then I end up buying you the highs and then I take a lot of risk and then I get shaken out on a quick micro pullback and then it continues running up. I don't oftentimes buy into, uh, let's say resistance getting chipped away, right? So my breakout trading is really like, it's not my bread and butter, I'm not really good at it. Um, but you can see, you know, I had more winners than losers, which is good, but you know I'm taking more risk on than I have rewards. So it's a bit of a thing that I need to fine tune a lot more. Uh, I just need to get a little bit more aggressive early on or make it a pullback trade where I'm kind of waiting for that micro pullback. You know, it's something that, you know, there's a lot of room to work on, but uh, yeah, it's it's uh, that's why we re review our statistics, right? So this is actually kind of a uh, really, really simple example here. You can see this is a late day breakout. Um, we have a nice move higher here and then it's cracking VWAP and I actually buy in the crack of VWAP and it doesn't end up working and then I, squ you know, instantly get back out. So this is, you know, really flimsy trading where in the end of the day, uh, it's just, my risk reward on it is a little bit sloppy. You can see I'm not having those really big winners like I should be having, while with the pullbacks, I'm having these uh, a little bit bigger kind of rewards here, 2.5, that's a nice one. Uh, these are also kind of small actually. Uh, and then this is the swing trade. Oh man, swing trading was really good this month. 2.2, uh, a little bit more. Um, okay, well this is not as actually as glorious as I was kind of thinking it was. Oh, there's a 5 percenter, so. Boom, right there. So let's actually look at that one. We have, you can kind of see here, we have a nice breakout and then we're getting a pullback to VWAP. This is, I love these setups. 
and then I'm buying, accumulating here, and then I'm uh, selling into a break of the former high. Um, very, very clean one. This is almost picture perfect. Doesn't really happen all the time like that. As you can see, it really only have uh, a few like that um, that are a little bit over 2%, but um, this is kind of like something that just makes me really happy. So if you see this happening on the live stream, you know I'm probably cheesing. Mm. This fan, uh, hopefully it's not making you guys go crazy. So I closed all the tabs and let's go back to the recap post and talk about some really, really, really easy ways to improve your day trading. All right, so what you see here is the next thing I have written literally is get a good night's rest. It's so important that you're not groggy, tired, um, you have good posture. I really like trading at a standing desk. That's really good to me. And as you saw the video before, right now I have a desk where I'm pretty much looking straight or I have a setup where I'm looking straight and I can look up as well because when you're trading for two plus hours, it's really nice to like not be hunched over and looking down and getting tired. Um, it's good to just you know have that energy looking straight um, I think that's really, really important. That's something I did much better today than yesterday, Monday. Oh man, I was so tired. To kind of add to that, stop trading when you are when you feel like you're sloppy. So Monday, I, I had like three bad trades in a row, and I was like, man, all of those three trades, they should have been a profit. And all three of them actually ended up working out if I just held. So I was getting shaken out, I was lacking conviction, I didn't have um, energy, uh, it was just, it was a total nonsense and I knew like I could keep trading and maybe I'll dig myself out of the hole But right now I am the, like the only reason there's a hole. It's not the market was okay um, There was nothing really that I that sh I should have been tripping over and, and clearly I was tripping over myself So acknowledging that I just you know said you know what today's not a trading day for me I'm just gonna stop and then if I did want to keep trading I always have my rule where if I reach my max stop Which is down 10% of my average position size then boom I'm out for the day um, Regardless no matter what I can't keep trading so if we come back to our stats here of $4,000, my average position size, then basically if we are down $400, right, 10% times 4,000 is $400, then I'm out for the day. So as our average position size increases to let's say $10,000, then if I'm down $1,000, then I can't keep trading. So it's, it's really a fairly simple way to kind of do it. All right guys, so before we get into tip number three, don't forget to hit that like button if you're enjoying the content. If you're totally new here, consider subscribing. I'd love to see you in the live stream. Join the rest of the community. It is a really, really good fun place to learn and just grow as a trader. Let's dive into tip number three. Review your trade and personal journal. This is really important to me. My trade journal is on this website, document all of my trades. So I'm, I'm really studying my past trades more than I am actually trading. I trade for about three hours a day, but I review my past trades. That takes usually an hour. I'm recapping my videos a day. That takes another 30 minutes or so. I'm doing monthly recaps, and then I'm just constantly reviewing my old videos. I'm researching other people. So in the end, I'm always doing more research and review than I am actually trading. And that has helped me become not just extremely consistent, but constantly reach new highs with my trading uh, profits and my trading journey overall. And if you scroll back up here, the major events, these are things that I always take out of my personal journal. So I go through my, I read my whole personal journal and see kind of those things that like, I really did mention several times, or you know, I, it's clearly kind of highlighted as a pivotal event. So I like to kind of throw that in here when I'm doing a little bit of recap. If you guys are using Trade Journal to document your trades, just um, keep in mind the stats are gonna be much more in depth. It's a big thing that's gonna be coming up for 2021. 20, uh, I am working right now on the trades import uh, feature. I wanna make that a little bit more efficient. So once that's done, I'm gonna go right to the stats and it's gonna be some big improvements. Actually, um, right now we focus a lot on averages, but I wanna get a lot of graphs on because I've been reading this factfulness book by Hans Rosling and even Bill Gates says one of the most important books I've read um, and they talk a lot about kind of how to read statistics, how to get the most out of a chart. And he talks a lot about spreads and the importance of spreads, spreads and what kind of the dangers in a way of averages because sometimes it kind of hides a lot of important for information. So the stats are gonna be um, a big focus in 2021. And like always, Trade Journal is going to be free. So guys, no stress about that. So yeah, it's gonna help you spot the, the winners, what's going wrong, stop, um, spot, uh, help you spot trades that are a little bit, you know, maybe causing a lot of your losses. Like sometimes I'll have, you know, a full green trading day. I just did like, I don't know, 15 
um, nice little base hits, and then two trades I give back a lot of profit. So if you can really avoid those big risky trades, you can do a lot, lot better. Um, and if you guys have any feedback, I don't know why I wrote back so big, you can always let us know, write the Discord, the Twitter, the Facebook, or me directly at alex at tradejournal.co. Most likely myself will be reaching out to you, and there's a good chance we'll be incorporating your uh, feedback at one point. Just give us a little bit of time, all right? Whew, guys, I know that was a bit of a longer video, but good on you for sticking through it because trading isn't you know, just as simple as buying and selling. You gotta study, you gotta study other people, you gotta study yourself, and then you know, take all those little pieces together and put it into your own personal trading strategy that fits off of your own personality. And the best way to do that is really just constantly improving it. It's not just one thing where you wake up one day and boom, it starts working. It's, it's one of those things that you work on it every single day. And then when you look back three months from now, you're gonna be like, wow, I've gotten much better or six months from now or 12 months from now or whatever, because every trade is building off of those last trades. All right, sweet guys, it's been a long day. Let's wrap it up here. I'll see you guys first thing tomorrow morning, unless it's weekend and you're watching this, then I'll see you guys Monday morning. Don't forget to drop a like on the way out. Consider subscribing if you're new. And like always, guys, stay safe and make some awesome trades. Ciao, ciao, guys.